Welcome to a brand new episode of the Real Life Podcast, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts and delivered by DoorDash. Welcome to Real Life, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) What is going on right now? I think that I'm in love with Matthew Kachuk. Are you guys all drunk? Episode 396 of the Real Life Podcast? 95. Ah, 395. Brought to you by the HGA Group, who we love very much. Shout out to the HGA Group. Here I'm Chuck, Jay, Bag Milk, Wanya, Chalmers. Everyone is uh, on the pod today. Back to full strength. We did it. We did it. Um, all right. What's up? <laughs> Not what talk about, what what the talk fuck about? was that kind of intro? <laughs> Your M. Chuck, he's making the most awkward face gestures right now because I think he's waiting for us to just absolutely. Whoa! Uh, okay. Surveyor Brett, uh, you've got it. Uh, that's getting edited out. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I was like saying, "I'm like shit. What am I doing?" Uh, he's making these weird face gestures because I think he's nervous that we're going to come at him here with a bunch of draft face, tales. Jay? You know what, you jerk? That's just how he looks. <laughs> uh, so, what should we dig into first? Hockey talk? Uh, did you get your poutine? I did. It was average. I didn't go to a very good spot, yeah. I don't think. Did you go to Schwartz's? No. Oh, fuck. I oh, didn't have time. I said you had this. one thing to do in Montreal. Didn't have time. Yeah, and it isn't even go to the draft. It was go to Schwartz's. Yeah, obviously. Is he turning did you return? Content? Did you return the lights that you bought? Or Ooh, did no. you bring them oh. home? What, what happened with the lights? They are home. I do have an interesting airport tale, though. A couple of interesting airport tales. Okay, sure. Um, Regale us. Also, one sec here. We got to get some lighting in here. The video is atrocious. Oh, man. I mean, <laughs> how many lights do you, does a guy need? Well, one thing on our list yeah, is improve our lights? video quality. So, yes, I am appreciative. And go to Schwartz's. I also want to see the lights from the photography store. Where are those? They are still at my house. Oh, so you're keeping those lights. Oh, yep. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, we have lights in here. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways... So airport story, airport I story. went out the night before my early morning flight. Mm-hmm. Never right. let an early flight ruin a good night. Exactly. Never, never. Frank was like, you should just stay up until you have to go to the airport. No, and I was like, bad idea. I was like, no bad idea, but I didn't stay up. Frank out. is a wild man. Yeah. I did stay out like relatively late. Yep. Um, so when I woke up to go to the airport at uh, five in the morning, Ugh. cause here's the thing in Edmonton. So my Tuesday flight out there. Yeah. Tuesday, I was at the airport 4.30 a.m. for a flight that boarded at 6, uh-huh. which is good when you're flying in Canada, right? Yeah. Just just fine. I almost didn't make it. Security? No, the baggage for Air Canada was insane. At one point, they had to, like, they stood with run there, like, if you are flying to Montreal, cut the line, like, get up here now. Because it was so insane. Security was wild, too. So for my flight, which departed at 8.50 from Montreal back to Edmonton, and I'd heard Montreal's airport was worse... I was like, I need to be there like stupid early. So I woke up at 545 to leave uh, my hotel room by six so that I could get there like a solid two and a half hours before my flight. Yeah. Um, So I wake up. I am still drunk. Um, Good man. Yeah. So I'm like trying to pack up all my stuff. I have this massive light stand that won't fit in my checked bag. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I just got to carry this thing now. So I'm like carrying that. I'm carrying two bags of stuff as well because the lights took up so much space and weight in my check bag that I then had to move a bunch of other stuff into my carry on. So it was a mess. Mm -hmm. I'm carrying all these bags. I get in my cab, get to the airport. Baggage takes eight seconds. (laughs) So kidding me. I would just lay on the floor. Well, right outside the gate and fall asleep. So the security security looked like it was longer. It took me about 45 and I have like those lav mics, right? Yep. Um, there were little wireless microphone packs that you're not allowed to put in your checked baggage. You have to put them in your carry on. Okay. I put, I, it's usually 50, 50. If those get like pushed aside in security and sure enough, they do this time. Cause they do look kind of sketchy, I guess, when they go through them on the x-ray. That's, sure. So I go through that. I go to the side to pick them up and the lady's like, what are you doing? And I was like, Oh, I was in Montreal covering the draft. My wireless mics probably like set off your thing. She's like, yep. She goes, I'm just going to scan them for chemicals or drugs. So she does it and it like sets off their system. <laughs> what? Hold on. Wait, what and done. Mic again? Pardon? The microphone made of pure cocaine. Is that what you brought again? Something like that. Who yeah. was using the mics? Because that, that'd be that'd be their voice, their their breath. Yeah, fair enough. Um <laughs> so she's like, I'm just gonna swipe them again. So she swipes them again. She's like, Yeah, they're setting it off. Give us all your stuff back. So now like my bags full of clothes are going back and she's tanking everything. She's up. like, You have terrible style, yeah. sir. So like everything's coming out of there. Um, 
it's a mess. She swipes him again. And she's like, you got to go off to the side. So I go off to the side. I get patted down. Mm -hmm. I come back and they're kind of like grilling me a little bit about like, where was I? Were my bags with me the whole time? Like any reason why this would be set off? No. So I was like, I don't know. Like at one point in that backpack over the last six months, I may have had like a bunch of cocaine. (laughs) Well, Ah. Like, I don't even know. Like, I've traveled with it before. Obviously not cocaine. One and done. One this, and is, done. this is the, the lingering potential on, after facts. I want to know where this is going. He's like, obviously not cocaine, but I do like to travel with well, a what, liter like, of liquid I was Bali. like, I was like, could legal marijuana set it off? And she's like, no. And I'm like, okay. So, like, what are we doing here? So, she keeps asking me these questions. Like, do you have medicated hand cream? Do you use, like, <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> So after doing this whole thing for like 20 Medicated hand cream. Yeah. Let me see those hands. Okay? I want to see those hands. So I had a friend. She looked at him. It's like, he's in need. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So anyways, after 25 minutes, she just like fills out a form and is like, you're fine. Okay. I don't know. Just, well, they, they're, they're, they're trying to scare you into saying this into yeah. slipping up. Yeah. So, so after all that, nothing, nothing. They just let me go. They were like, you can repack all your shit now. That's why when you do a one and done, you have to burn everything you used for the one and done. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. You got to show up at the airport naked. Yes. You have to do a full Brazilian. You have to, everything's got to be removed. So I finally board my plane, end up being, I went and got breakfast. And then I was basically on time after breakfast, like walked right on the plane, sat down, (laughs) fell asleep, wake up halfway through the flight. And I was like, oh, I promised bag milk. I'd write an article. So I bust out my laptop, start writing an article. Um, I'm like halfway through the article. There's about an hour left in the plane. I kind of go, I was sitting, there was only two on each side. Right. Yeah. And when I'd walked onto the plane, I was like, Oh, there's like Keith Gretzky sitting in first class. And like, there's Bob green sitting in first class. Uh So I sit there and I go in my window seat to do like my stretch each way. And I look behind me, behind me, diagonal row right behind me. Fucking Jay Woodcroft. Oh, Woody. So he is a, they don't have him in first class. No, they had like, Oh my God. Bob green, get back. Right, Woody in the front. Jeremy Cooper was back with the. With Who the, the fuck is that? The video. That's the video guy. Oh, okay. our offside guru. Yeah, sure. Uh, so there was like all the coaching staff was more or less there. Um, Maybe they booked those flights before they got all that cap room. They're yeah. trying to be economical. I think we should praise them for this. So Jay Woodcroft and I kind of make Woody like, deserves to be front of the house. Like kind of awkward eye contact as I like look back and he was looking at me and I was like I just I've been like putting out writing this article that you can clearly see like diagonally in front of yeah. you. Um, so that was kind of awkward. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You were writing an article about Jay Woodcroft and he could see you one row back writing an article. I was writing an article about cap space and forward combinations and stuff like that. And he could like see it. Wow. So that's a little awkward. That's um, not awkward. Why? That's way that's cooler than that's if it good. was like you could read over his shoulder. That's you good. look like a G in that story. There is a older lady sitting right next to me on the plane. Mm-hmm. Plane lands. Jay Woodcroft is up out of his seat like first one up. he's an early oh no and like Uh, so i'm sitting there i'm like fuck jay woodcroft's an early riser like no he taps the old lady on the shoulder and goes don't worry ma'am i'll grab your bags for you ah that's our boy totally redeems himself he's a gentleman he probably wanted to be in the back of the plane with the people yeah okay okay he was pretty incognito he just had like his oilers cap on his mask his glasses he's just jay woodcroft wearing an oilers cap that's incognito (laughs) but like because yeah because i'm a pretty bad disguise jeez wow it was the surprise you recognized him honestly he had a a jersey on that said jay woodcroft on it but outside of that nobody knew who he was wow he had his skates with his skate the fact that you even recognized him is just a a story in itself (laughs) jesus did he have a stick in his gloves with him he had a power pose yeah he was just posed in the front of the plane the whole time <laughs> my god uh, this is what tyler was scared about this is what he was nervous at the start of the show i was making the faces <laughs> he knew this was coming yeah <laughs> so this good guy jay woodcroft helped an old lady a with a huge spaz yeah, being at the front of the plane he's like i'm a head coach i'm not riding in the back with the people <laughs> fuck you like a squeaky so pissed he, off voice he helped i can see old, that scenario too helped an old lady with his well family. that is that's good that's good stuff that's good reporting right there People need you know to know that. in the back with the people? Dallas Aiken. Oh, no. Dallas Aiken. He, he would have he, he, he would have cycled from Montreal to Edmonton. Yeah. You know that. Powered by asparagus. Uh-huh. Have you ever seen the tick, the uh, Insta Stories compilation of Dallas Aikens having COVID reporting that he has no symptoms? No. <laughs> they showed it on the telecast one time, and it was just him in his backyard every day, like smirking, going, <laughs> no symptoms, day two. <laughs> No symptoms. Oh, I remember no. that actually. Yeah, no, just no preaching, symptoms. preaching the no donut lifestyle. Yeah, he used to. Oh he would cycle God. to every game in the winter. In the winter? Yeah. 
Unless there's maybe some kind of reason he had to drive, but he cycled to every game. Maybe he had a DUI and no one realized. And they assumed he was a fitness freak. That's a good way to mask it. So your rim shot. Yep. Did this weekend feel a little different for you? Like, was this the first time you really ever covered and seen like all the, you know, the, the high, the, the heavy, the high hit, heavy hitters, the, the players in the NHL and stuff, or was this, is this, getting old to you now well like all-star weekend was cool because it was all like the superstar players right this one was more interesting just because it's all like the gms like there was i don't know if i set, shared this story but like when i was walking back from the nhl hotel to my hotel one day because i'd go to the nhl hotel and eat the meals there um it was just like GM, God damn what was the nhl ball. hotel the w Sher- the sheraton sheraton yeah you'd eat all the meals there yeah, they had like some free meals there. They had some free meals at the rink. So I was just going and like mooching all the free meals wherever I could. Smart, Who was the drunkest smart, GM smart. you saw all weekend? I did not see a single GM out in the wild other than like seeing them on the street. Who was the drunkest media figure you saw all weekend? It might have been me. Nice. Nice. Respect. Way to represent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, Number one. Well, I told you guys about that little media party, right? And uh, I drank like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was a good time. And I think that's everything for my trip to Montreal. That's it. Nothing else. Do you feel as though your career is going well, your M Chuck? How do you feel right now? I think you're doing well. The draft was cool. Like, again, getting to meet like some media people and all that. I told you about Kyle Bukaskis at the media party. I shared a bunch of Oh, you mean your number one fan? Yeah, Mm -hmm. I said you were very handsome or something. Yeah. Yeah. Asked me for a job. You're moving quick. He admires your hair. Mm hmm. Yeah. Bag milk. Yes. Why did he did you look very, he had a good, 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 clean look this weekend. Just yeah. so you know, he did. Why don't you pump the nation's tire a little bit and tell me what you told me at the, uh, baseball game yesterday. I remember what I told you. <laughs> that he's about, the, to the about the traffic, sexually? about the traffic. Oh yeah. We send a, uh, day two of the draft and Tyler was a contributor. Um, single day traffic record for Weathers nation. Really? On Friday. Yep. Wow. How many? Uh, 210,000. Woo. Wee. That's a lot. People wanted to hear about Reed Schaefer. Well, there was that. There was Keith. There was Cassian. There was your draft diaries. There was, we posted over those two days of the draft, probably close to 40 articles. Wow. Amazing. That's how you do it. You crush it. That's unbelievable. We were just pumping them. It was funny. Quads texted. (laughs) There's a group text of me, bag milk and quads and quads (laughs) text. Like how CA just crushed it. Please tell me it was it was bigger than ON. And I was like, Bag Milk, you want to give him the news? C so had a good day. C so had a great they day. They had a great day. They had a, really had a great good day. day. But it was cute. It's cute. I love I like the competitive culture that we're kind of building within the team here. Because Quads really wants to try to take down ON. He does. And I love good it. Good luck with that one. I know. Quad, never gonna fucking team. happen, but I love it. That's why I like to also randomly send him pictures of magpies. Just to let him know what he's seen. <laughs> I <laughs> said it. What the hell he did about his trip to Soyuz? So he saw a, another new bird. Yeah, he's never he seen. New, he's just like, I don't remember what it was, but I saw a new bird. Oh God. Where was he raised? Like a maximum security prison? <laughs> Seems like it. He was raised in a Sears or something. Oh like that, man. And, and, and like, but like today's special, like couldn't leave it. Mm-hmm. Couldn't leave the department store. Yep. Turn into a mannequin. If he took his hat off. That's right. Enjoys a good wheel of cheese from the States. He does. And the spices that oh, go along with it. He is, <laughs> you know, the more you talk to Claude's, the more interesting he gets. Yep. It's awesome. Anyways. Yes. How was Faber? Faber was good. Got to chat with him a lot. Got to How do was, a video with him. We just like as a whole, we had a big group of people out there this time. We might've been the most well-represented agency brand content. There company. was a lot of nation Period. people there. Well, even from how many Oregon, did ESPN have two. I saw Emily Kaplan. Okay. One. And that was it. Yeah, that's right. I knew it. We finally did it. We're bigger than ESPN. Mm -hmm. Well, even so like when Ken Holland spoke to the media after round one of the draft, you asked him a question. You did. Gregor looked at you intently. Yeah. Gregor was in tight on that. And I could not stop. He was, he was a, he was a scrum lurker there. He was like, (laughs) he was standing like behind Holland, like like, right beside us. I love it. It But there Gregor and Holland. (laughs) Gregor answers the question I ask. There was only (laughs) four four Edmonton media members in those scrums with Holland and Reed Schaefer. It was myself, Gregor, Nugent Bowman, and Tony Brar. So the team employee yeah. and the three media members that weren't there from the team. So two of them were Oilers. Half was nation. Half of the scrum was nation. Woo. And what's, and, what's, and what's your, what's your first impression of, uh, of our draft pick, our, our hometown draft pick. He looks like he's 11. That's oh, good. Get used to it, buddy. They, yeah. look, they look younger as you get older. I know. Oh, that man, is yeah. That's what she said. Uh-huh. <laughs> and what? he is rather tall. 
He's a tall drink of water. Isn't six, three, six, four, six, three. Nice. Did you get uh, a dork vibe off of him or like a cutie pie vibe? Definitely more of a cutie pie vibe would be my scouting report. Aww. On him. And he, why don't you marry him? He was very excited yeah, to talk about Connor McDavid um, um, as he should uh, be. He dropped the, we were like, who are your favorite players growing up? And he was like, uh, like it used to, yeah. when I was really little, like maybe Sean Horkoff, but like definitely McDavid <laughs> growing up. It's like, damn McDavid sure. growing up. Where's he from? Spruce. Spruce. Yeah. Spruce Garf. No shit. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're Chuck. It's new boy auction day. As we say on Tumblr, mm-hmm. that's the draft new boy auction day. Yeah. The boy auction. What? Yeah. Big set success. my set my expectations. Who did we draft? What could I expect for an outcome? And how quickly? He's a third liner, isn't he? Middle yeah, six is what I. He's a he's a middle six winger, but he'll be good. Middle he's, six winger. Can he fight? No, probably not. No one fights anymore. <laughs> Can he hit? Can he slap? Yeah, I've read that he's feisty. That's what I was reading. Yeah, feisty is okay. good. Is so don't worry, we're gonna get Nick Dolore. He'll handle all the fighting. I would peg his ceiling at bigger Yamamoto would be his ceiling. Okay. That's well, good. That's we clear, all wish Yamamoto clear, was bigger. It's clear he has Fan the favorite? potential to develop because, well, he was, he had like two points, I think his first season. And then the next season broke out huge, you know, like, so his, he's going to develop hopefully. Well, well, and it's also that. very good to have ginger representation on the team now. Mm-hmm. Ryan yeah. Pike from Could Flames Nation. Favorite? Does he have it in him? He seems like a happy go lucky. He seems likable. Yeah. A hometown kid. There's he a lot. Seem likable. There's an opportunity he, there for a hometown he's, kid. He's he's sure doing his best by dropping mm. a Sean Horkoff reference mm. in his first yeah, press conference. Well, I know. he's he's a guy who's been through the decade of darkness. Yeah, he knows it. Uh, Ryan Pike from Flames Nation actually DM me over the weekend. There's an interesting little wrinkle with Reed Schaefer. Oh boy. Uh, because of his late birthday, if the Oilers sign Schaefer before the end of 2022, they actually get an additional slide year, and his ELC could last four years instead of three. Oh, it's do it. How can that be possible? No, that's good. Do it. That's it is fun. a late CBA birthday. quirk, according to Pike, and the Flames just did it with Connor Zary a couple of years ago. So do it. So I do it. A little uh, do it. cat management there. If do I it. take a second to be a legitimate reporter at the draft, you're up, Chuck. Okay. I was speaking with a scout of oh, a team uh-huh. who was in that range. And he told me he went and had a scout that was in that range. Whose team was in that, that range. Of oh, okay. second overall, right. Okay. Like they had oh. a shot to pick Reed Schaefer or they almost did. Um, and they and he said, he's missing Leonard. a toe, isn't he? No. So he said, um, he was like, we really, really liked him. And he said, actually, I went for breakfast Uh with Reed the other day. You'll be surprised at how driven he is. Oh, okay. So it's the team that took, who's the Finn Lambert. They would have taken Lambert. No, they took Lambert. Yeah. Lambert fell hard. Yeah. Pretty hard. I mean, considering two years ago, this was supposed to be the Shane Wright, Brad Lambert draft. Where's the wrinkle in this story or MJ? Uh, yeah, there's no wrinkle. You, you told us like it's you the opposite a of a wrinkle. I, see a no, no. I never did. I say the word wrinkle. Yes. Yeah. There's a. Wrinkle you set it up to be shaper. like there's a potential wart no. here that we need no, to explore. He, just said, he said like he's he's oh uh, the only thing the scout said about him that maybe might not work is he said his skating isn't the best. Sometimes he That's struggles to he struggles that, to play with pace. That can be a wrinkle. It can be like, a wrinkle. You but said hopefully. you actually did clickbait in conversation there. Yeah. <laughs> like you said something sensational that had nothing to do with what you said there. <laughs> Good podcasting. A you know, call this one. The problem with Reed, Sha- the wrinkle with Reed Schaefer. Yeah. Reed Schaefer has a wrinkle. He has a wrinkle. But he's a cutie. We pie. need a new hometown hero, cutie pie guy. It'd be good. Get him some memes. Get him some merch. You know how you do. I agree. We mm-hmm. need new heroes. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you one thing, Wanya. If these Jack Campbell to Edmonton rumors are true, which it kind of seems like they may be, the meme yeah. team is going to be on full alert uh, with the guy named Soup. All the town. soup apple. There's oh, so many boy. soups out there Don't now. I just hope. Like I said, I'm I'm worried this isn't going to work out for the sole purpose that we're going to sign him to a contract. And that's just going to be his anchor. You really think so? I'm just, uh, that's just what my you, gut is saying. Well, let me ask you a question. I hope I'm wrong. Would you rather the Oilers pursue Jack Campbell, which it seems like they are mm-hmm. or fish for Matt Murray. <laughs> like it seems like the Leafs are. Yeah, but they're going to get like, yeah, I, I get that, but they're going to get Matt These Murray for like 50% retained yeah. where Jack Campbell's going to be 5 million. Yeah. Matt Murray cleared waivers last year, bro. Yeah. It's six. Cause he's 6 million bucks or six and a half million bucks. I'm not saying Matt Murray's good, but that's also not our, our option. Who's like, our third option. Connor Hellebuck should be number one. Oh, well, God, of course. Win it, win it, win it. 
what if Winnipeg says, hey, guess what? We're not trading. We should do a bundle deal. Because what is, what is, Dubois has two years left or one? Yeah. Two, two or left. one? Two years left. Is it two or if, if it's two, I would, I would try to get both those guys. We got a three year window. Two to two years. Yeah. This is not realistic. Why? Because they're not trading you Connor Hellebuck. Why not? Because they think they, they think they can win. No, they don't. They, they have an internal issue they need to solve. Yeah. And All they need, they need, leave. they need a courageous GM to, to yep. remind them of that and release them of their issues. Yep. If he can do that, we're calling him big Dick Ken from now on. Some of us already call Richard Holland. <laughs> yeah, Richard Holland. <laughs> Richard. <laughs> big rich. Big old rich. Big old Richie Holland. But why not take a gamble to take those two years? Because you, he's already signaled that he wants out. Yes. Right? That, that, that was the why not try to... If, if, if Dubois PLD. was in our top six, that's that's your cane replacement. That's your cane replacement for cheap. Five million. Tyler's just ignoring Are you sure he's got two more years left? Connor Halibut? No. Oh, Dubois? Purely Dubois. He's an RFA, but he's two more years of team control. Oh, of team control. But like, oh, is I he under contract right now? He needs a deal. Oh, he needs a deal. Oh, I thought he was still under. Okay. Cause yeah, he sent a two year five schmilly, right? Yeah. Here he is right here. Don't get some wonky ass goalie. Go get Halibut. Don't get a 30 year old. <laughs> but you, you guy. can't. They should offer Halibut. sheet. They should offer sheet <laughs> Dubois. You know what? what do you One mean better. Get One better. What do you mean? I think they should get Vasilevsky. They should get now. You're being fucking crazy. Tampa Winnipeg doesn't need to blow it up. Winnipeg does. They have Winnipeg got. Doesn't un- think they need to blow it up. Shifley is they telling them they do. They're, 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 that's what they're signaling. They're signaling that. But Shifley isn't happy and wants out. <laughs> Same with Wheeler. <laughs> that's not true. So you don't like your core can't be Ehlers and Connor, two little guys. Of, Ehlers and Connor, guys. Ehlers and Connor are both better than Shifley and Wheeler. No. <laughs> what? Law. No. A lot of speculation. Chalmers, you, you your thoughts sound on like you're yeah, I know Kyle O'Connor scores lots Jets. of goals, but Blake Wheeler is a complete hockey player. <laughs> Blake Wheeler is old as shit. Old as shit. He's your, he's your captain for Kyle, a reason. Kyle Connor has scored at a 40 goal pace in three straight seasons. Yeah, so has Mark Shifley ever done that? Do you build? Can, okay. So then let's see. You're saying um, Mark Shifley has never done that. Has Blake never. Wheeler ever done that? Well, we want Connor Hellebuck. Yeah, well, kind of we get PLD 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 but the point is they're not just going to trade him. We've heard uh, there's been zero reporting saying that the Winnipeg Jets are going to blow it up. So that, why did that's it? what a trade is, your M-Chuck. That's you, what we pay Big Dick you gotta, to swing in. <laughs> Richard, <laughs> yeah. The Big Rich is going to come and make Christ, moves. You always don't want to do the deals everyone's hearing. You want the off the yeah, board. Exactly. You're deal. so, yeah. You're Jeez, so on the surface. Please. You got to get deep, bro. It's the trades that we don't think are going to happen that are the exactly. most spectacular. Like Pronger coming to Edmonton. And yeah. Nike. Joe Thornton trade. Yeah. Whew. Off the radar. Future. This, this is a win now, now moment. So you got to give, yes, you have to give Winnipeg now. a reason to give you Connor Ellabach and give Pierre-Luc Dubois. Future or other Connor Hellebach. If you players. got Pierre-Luc Dubois, that is, that, 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 that's your Evander Kane solved. Solved. Do you even know what this package would involve? I don't give a fuck. Give it all well, like, at this point. Give it give wh- whatever it that. takes. So, <laughs> exactly. okay, let's walk through this. Okay. So, if we're getting Dubois and Hellebuck, the next two first. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I would first. give up one of Borgo, Holloway, or two of uh, Borgo, Holloway, Broberg. Uh, okay. So, two of those guys are gone. Two of those guys wow. are gone. Wow. Um, they can have Pooley RV, his rights. <laughs> yeah. Sure. That, that, whatever. But I know. I know. Just, just, just check them in. Signed. Um, and then, and then I'd give him fuck two more seconds if we have them Ooh, or a second and a third. So your package is four picks and two legit blue chip prospects. I God think when it tells you to go to hell, I don't think so. Go to hell. I don't think so. I don't, they're not winning, hell, but they know they're not winning a Stanley cup next year. You are just saying that. No, no, no. I know that. I'll bet you right now that Winnipeg doesn't win the Stanley Cup. Well, no, because they're not. Exactly, because they're not. <laughs> I agree with you. Yes. Jets, Kevin Chevel Dayoff yeah, does it. it. He won't publicly Kevin agree. Jeff. He will never go publicly and say, we will not win a Stanley Cup. Like, we will not. Like, every, every GM's got to go in believing it unless they've issued a letter to their fans saying, we're blowing it up. 
Give me one move that the Jets have made that shows you they aren't trying to contend next year. It's they haven't done anything to suggest they aren't. What have they done? They've kept everyone. They keep everyone together. We don't know what they're keeping yet. You don't know that. They didn't trade anyone at the draft. Okay. Because they're waiting to trade us a buck. They're waiting, but <laughs> definitely Dubois is available. Mm-hmm. Is known. Now, the only thing is I'm just worried that <laughs> his, his attitude, because he keeps wanting to leave. I think he's just trying to march his way closer to Montreal, but. <laughs> Maybe he's heading west. It's a good conversation. I'm glad we're having it. He's got yeah, well, but your your up track's absolutely flabbergasted here. Well, no, because it's like, hey, they're they're signing Jack Campbell. Okay. That is happening. He's signing a five by five deal on Wednesday. That is so that bad. Begin? That is bad. That is a bad signing, and How we haven't even signed that? it yet. I, I don't I don't disagree. I don't mind Jack Campbell, but I'm telling you, <laughs> at that price you tag, <laughs> at that price tag, we uh, uh, that, is, a- that is not set up for success. We were putting some bets on too. Red Jacket, I know you can hear me. How yeah. do you know this? Friedman on his podcast said he would be surprised if it's not Campbell coming to Edmonton. A lot of insiders have said yeah, they're all saying it, but like, that's the thing. I'm just worried that with the, the price tag is going to be so high. We're going to be so fucking, it just puts way too much pressure on this guy. Five by five is what the rumor is. That's too much. How did these rumors You should never buy so much they- for a goalie anyways, unless it's Vasileski or Hellebuck or Hellebuck. Your Amtrak, now that you're in the Illuminati, <laughs> how do these rumors make the round of the insiders? Like, how the fuck does one get wind of something, then all of a sudden they all get wind of it? Like, how Jack, are most Jack, things... Jack Campbell's agent says it to somebody, and then they run with it, so they can pr- drive his price up? Tom, are you an insider, too? 100%. Uh, agents definitely bring in insiders Hell to yeah. help uh, yeah, get the narrative out there. I think I'm that's asking the guy it. who went to the draft and uh, cheers with... I don't know if I it. trust this guy that went to the draft. He doesn't think Winnipeg would want to blow it up. Damn it all. I'm <laughs> on the podcast. Answer my question, your Amtrak. How do insiders get their info? They have a lot of friends, more or less. Oh, friend. But like, how does one guy get one opinion and all of a sudden four of them have it? Are they just copying each other? Are they reaching out being like, Hey, any word you're interested in Campbell? Like, how does it work? It's a lot of reaching out is how I'm led to believe it works. Just a ton. So they of- just text the GM, like any truth to this, Dave? Yeah. Hmm. It's basically it. So if you get a GM's number, do you feel qualified to just ping them all the live long day? Or how does that G code work? Uh, you need to have like, it would be off the basis of having a personal relationship with them. Right. Um, so it's kind of like at that point, like you're just calling a friend. I wonder how big the font is on Ken Holland's phone. Oh, huge. <laughs> Ginormous. <laughs> I can confirm <laughs> from firsthand knowledge. It's huge. <laughs> it's not even, a, it's so high. There's not even a number you can associate with. That's big Richard for <laughs> you. Yeah, big it Richard all, that big font. You're, you're uh, leaving Jay. That big dick, that big font. <laughs> Jay is going from doing it in studio, doing it to the road. I might just not let him out of the waiting room. I just ordered myself some AirPods yesterday. I'm excited to get it's a good purchase. It is. But then you'll always, you'll always be like, oh, I'm just waiting for my AirPods to connect. Like, yeah, that's fine. I only use one at a time because if I use two, I get a headache. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Like the noise canceling ones I got, they, they make like a fucking warp bubble in my head. So is that the pro then? I would imagine. I don't know. know. Speaking of headaches. Holy Christ. This is a lot of hockey speculation talk with no definitive. I don't understand what he's saying when you can't like, all GMs think that they can win the cup. We say Win- what Winnipeg knows they can't this year. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Like, yeah, There's a lot of yelling on this one. Uh, well, it's just a lot of nonsense. A lot of yelling. The pictures I took of Tyler are so funny. Yep. He was really unimpressed with Jay. Should put those up on the real life Insta. Well, and you should have saw his face at the beginning of yeah. the show when he was just, he, he knew that he knew this was coming. He knew the Winnipeg debate was coming. <laughs> Tyler fears Hellebuck. But no reason though. <sighs> hey, your M check. Yeah. Did I leave my car keys in the studio? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what no. is happening? I don't see them. Jay. No, no, that's no, good. Okay, I'm pivoting. I'm pivoting here. We're gonna talk about something a little more. Talk fun about the Riverhawks game. That's what we're that gonna wasn't do. Wasn't fun. It was fun. That was, it was pretty fun funny. to listen to you guys argue about that because we got a trade Jesus to go Christ. through. We just picked up fucking Dubois and uh, Alabama. <laughs> 
<laughs> Can't wait to see him in Oilers Blues. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, this this Sunday, this Sunday, the the, the the skies opened up and we uh we had some pretty nice weather. And I saw Bag Milk and Wanye at the Riverhawks game. It was great. That was and my first was game fantastic. in a while. Mine too. Uh, first game Mine of the too. season, first game back at that park in a long time. And man, that ballpark is great. They did a really nice job with it too. It brought back a lot of, because we had gone to prospects game and it, it kind of seemed like no offense to the prospects, but it, it was what they were dealing with. The fact that the team was a little bit lesser and a little bit lesser of a league, but they were kind of dealing with just a half-assed product and kind of did a half-assed job. And the River Hawks reminded me of when I was a kid going to Trappers games, which were electric back in the day, like the atmosphere on the concourse, every, all, all the, the concession stands were opened up. Like from the minute you got there, parking was great. Didn't, didn't take very long to get a parking stall. Obviously a quick walk to the ballpark parking's cheap. You get in there and it's just like, it's got small town baseball atmosphere written all over it. From the minute you walk through the interesting big take I'm from the concourse, the show. from the concourse into the, into the stadium. Now we had, from what I can understand, we had one of our better pitchers starting, if not maybe our ace. And uh, it was seven nothing after two, and that still didn't dampen the spirits in there. Everybody was still having a good time. The sun was beating, the beers were flowing. I had myself a hot dog because I mean, when in Rome, you got to have yourself a hot dog got at the Riverhawks game. But they have done some things with that stadium. I, I I came down and saw you guys in the in the boxes, and they've been Flex. renovated. Yeah, we are flexible. They they have been renovated. They got a nice new flooring, nice new countertops, scoreboard, bar fridge in there, little scoreboard, they got a bunch of tables with their logos on the tables. That's right. Like those, it, just, uh, it feels. What would you call those Chalmers? We were talking about them yesterday. Those like Coors Light zones down at the end on the uh, the yeah. first and third base. They're they're like they're like outdoor patios, right? On one side, they've got all these couches with fire tables and tables. And then behind that, but it isn't half soft- ass. Sorry to interrupt. No, it isn't half ass. Like in, pa- in past seasons, like well, that, they didn't that's do like what- one table. They did like a bunch. And it no, that's, out my, out well that's now, my do you buy Do you buy tickets for that area or can, is it just like festival seating? I think you can just like smooth on served. down. Yeah. So there's because they have, the they have those tables right along the baseline, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right along the baseline. Like, so you're literally five feet away from where the bullpen is, where the guy's warming up on the, on the left field line, on the right field line. There's another bar too over there. And halfway during the game, they offered people with, with general admission tickets for $5 a ticket. You could upgrade, come down there. You've got your own bar. You've got like, you know, the bar for the section and you can have yourself soft seating or high tops, you know, waiters and waitresses for with menus. And that's kind of what both sides seem like. Now, I didn't sit down there, so I don't know if you could just buy yourself a table, get a ticket, but um, but it's like right on the field. And it's it's just a really cool atmosphere to sit. And you're right, like with with prospects, it kind of felt just half assed, but this is not. This is there's it's beautiful this down there. Fully like, asked. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They use their whole um, ass. The one fully thing about baseball. the one thing about that stadium, when it is sunny, there is, unless you're on the concourse. There is oh, no escaping that sun. I got it roasted was, uh, yesterday. We got roasted. Like, I don't know. Somehow I got a, 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 a sunburn through my hat. Uh, the beers made it a little more uh, enjoyable. Beers because, help. Yeah. For the first little bit, I was just so hot and uncomfortable. You know, you're sitting at a wedding ceremony and you're just like, I can't wait this to be done. You know, that's kind of what it felt like for the first couple innings. But then the, then the, uh, the beer started to kick in and uh, that went away. But there was a so whole run. of the wedding you attend. Chalmers, most of the weddings you attend are at a baseball stadium. Nope, they're outside, though. Same kind of thing. <laughs> Sitting outside. Well, fair I'd enough, love fair to enough, have a wedding enough. at a baseball. You could probably rent that place out and have a wicked wedding. Have the reception in, in the in center field. But yeah, and then home run derby. <laughs> home run derby. Yeah, not many people hitting out of there. One one home run yesterday. And it, it just it it, it it made me think too about you saying that you could hit a, a, a left field line drive out of the out of the park and it just reaffirmed Who said it, that, that there is there is, JR. Jay said he could hit. I, I really want to give it a go. I, I just, in, in my heart of hearts, I feel like I got a chance. You'd have to whale he, that thing. These, there was about, it's a big so the park. First, the first two, you innings, see me hit a golf ball. It's big. It's big. Whoa. I'll give you that, but it ain't baseball. And the first five outs for the river Hawks were all pop flies, which guys crushed and they didn't even make it to the fence and they were crushed. But 
the the, the last I'm, and best. I'm movie. worried I'm going to get so embarrassed by this, but I really want to try. No, you and, and and we can make it happen because that place is not expensive to rent out. But the last and 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 maybe the best thing about it was at the end of the game, they offer anybody that would like to to come down through the executive lounge and go onto the field behind home plate and basically just free wheel onto the field. And they have the river Hawks like bullpen cart where, where the trainers and the, uh, the, the guys, like it's a big golf cart decked out river Hawks stuff. It's beautiful. They give you rides around the field for the kids on there. You can run the bases, all the play. Well, a lot of the players from the river Hawks came out and were actually signing autographs, which was cool. You know, you cool. might not know who these kids are, but the kids just love it. My kids were running around cool. getting kids to sign their new River Hawk shirts. It was uh, for 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 a small town baseball game. It was one of the better experiences I've had in a long time. And the new scoreboard son. looks great. The scoreboard's beautiful. It looks awesome. Beautiful. They're playing nice yeah. videos on there. The the whole thing is good. They play Upgrades. way better music too. Way better. Music. We were commenting on that. It was a it was a vibe in there yesterday. Excellent. It was the, uh, the video. I love how they always, after they get an out on the post, they do the caca. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The caca is I feel loud. like I'm getting dive bombed by a pterodactyl <laughs> in yeah. Jurassic Park. Like, Scared me the, the first time. They, they have a really good in it because they, they, they mix in with really good tunes to get the vibe going with the occasionally well-timed organ. You know what I mean? Because everybody loves a ballpark organ, right? To give you the, da, 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 uh, uh, uh. so the other one was when they hit a foul ball and it left the, the, the actual field, you know, you'd get the, the car alarm going off or the windows crashing. And there was oh, the quite best. a few. Oh yeah. It was good. It was good. The, the netting is disappointing. I understand why it's there, but there is netting up and down both lines. So it has to be a really well-placed foul ball for it to get into the crowd. I think I only saw out of probably 20 foul balls and only three or four of them actually went into fans hands, you know, and that's uh that, that is what it is. I understand why they do it, but it takes your need for a glove down. You don't need one as much, but what a, what a, so what a way to spend a Sunday. It was a great Sunday down there. I think the only thing better than that would be go, go on a Saturday or Friday night under the lights, a little cool, oh, yeah. you know, under the lights. Friday night, some, they do fireworks after. I mean, it just keeps getting better and better. Place is awesome. Now we got to go to a, we got to go to a stingers game and, and evaluate and rank that as well. What's a Stingers game? Is that basketball. the basketball? basketball? I would love to go. Yeah. Where do they play out of? Uh, Expo. The Expo Center. Wow. Has anybody been? Has anybody even wow. seen? Wow. Stingers, so they're the shit. They're great. Really? Jay, didn't you go it like a week shockingly, ago? Shockingly, I remember the Skyhawks, Chalmers, as I'm sure you do too. Remember the Skyhawks? Of, co- of course, man. How can I forget? The, the ill-fated professional basketball team in the late 90s, I think, when we were kids. Yeah, something like that. Anyways, if that's your benchmark for success, the Stingers are the bloody uh, Chicago Bulls. It's first of all fun. Secondly, the building is a brand new experience. I've never sat in that place before. And they have it done up right. Like the music is up. It's really fun. The mop is oodle noodle. Like what more could you want? I do like that mop it, too. It's so cool. It's true. You know what? I'd, I'd love to go to one of those games. And I guess if, if people are wondering why I'll we take like to bring up- on a date. Oh, sounds good. If people wonder why we like to bring up the Riverhawks, it's because like Edmonton, in the summer, you know, you've got a great river valley, but it's things like, like, you know, competitive small town baseball that really just gives the vibe. You know what I mean? Like I'm a little more yep. proud of Edmonton just because of that experience. And the fact that we do that, right. You know, it's something that I think that they said their highest crowd was like 4,000 uh, so far this year. And I just think to myself, that's crazy. That not no, more they, people. They, they, so reached, they reached 9,000. They reached 9,000 for Canada. Yeah. They set a league Canada. attendance record. See, that's amazing. And 9,000 like, a candidate? Yeah. Something like that. That's awesome. 8,600 or 9,000. Yeah. Did you go? Uh, good. No. We, uh, we uh, gave away the box. Uh, I thought it was either for charity. Yeah, it was or a charity it was thing. Yeah, Noodle. It was one of the two. That's we good. Do, Noodle uh, has that many games to give away. Yeah. And there, and there he concludes our weekly Riverhawks update. Yeah. It was fun. Oh, is this Chalmers, a who else Chalmers did you, you're trying uh, to instill? What? Is this a, uh, one of those segments you were talking about last episode? You want to Hell instill yeah. into the show? And it ties into Chal. I'm Chalm in on the Riverhawks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also Chalm. Chalm. Uh, I mean, did you, hey, I'm, and did you know you get Chalm. yourself a bat of beer? 
no, they didn't have any. It, but yeah, it was, was too late when I got there. With them. And to be honest with you, I'm going to go, I'm going to hot take it. I'm going to keep it 100. That bat, that bat doesn't seem like the most economical or ideal way to drink a beer there. It Number adds, one. At a baseball game, it adds to the experience. <clears throat> I really Number wanted one, here, here, here's my reasoning. Number one, it is way too long to hold comfortably. Um, it, it's like two and a half feet long. It can't set it down. So you got to hold it the whole time. Number two, it spreads the beer out so far because it's so tall. That beer is getting warm. How many beers are in it? Question. How many beers are in that there bat? Two? Uh, 26 ounces. So it's a pint and a little bit. Because hmm. uh, I wanted a beer bat yesterday. And I was too late, unfortunately, when I got there. I got there for yeah, first pitch. Yeah, yeah, there was not so fast. <clears throat> they sell out of everything fast. That really cool River Hawks hat that you have, they didn't have any more of those. Yeah, what oh, size did they say they had games. yesterday? Yeah. They 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 had they had 19 eights. So like an eight <laughs> is about the biggest. There's only one person I know that wears an eight, and he's on this <laughs> pod, <laughs> and his name is Wanye. And they're like literally, <laughs> I, I put it like, on. Can you imagine someone wearing a fucking eight? I take my Oilers Nation hat off and show them the sticker. Eight. I was like, oh, so you're the one guy that they're expecting to buy 19 of those. Yeah, but, you know, I will. You know what's, if there's hat tricks. You know what's funny about the Chom In, Chom Out section is how Chom Out your M Chuck is about talking Riverhawks. He has not looked up from his phone. He has no opinion on this. What? What? What's the deal? You do, why do you hate Edmonton Riverhawks? Why do you hate Edmonton? I think why this do you hate Edmonton? Alternate theory. I think Tyler had FOMO that he wasn't able to enjoy a baseball game with us. <laughs> okay, maybe. Yeah. I, July 22nd, we're going as the crew. Patient. I was told, yeah, I was not told about this uh, fun night in the suite the other day. So that sucks. I wasn't in the suite with them to be, mm. to be, to mm. be uh, completely transparent. Mm. I was there with my two boys and mm. a couple of families from uh, our hockey team that we know. I just, I went and I wanted to go say hi to my boys. It was just a little pop in. Um, honestly, I just pop felt it. like I had nothing to contribute because I haven't been to a Riverhawks game yet. So I didn't chime in. That was my first yesterday. And I planned to go again because it was a great time. Sounds yeah. like it. Thomas, what were your Wanya Jr. impressions? My one day junior impressions were, wow, I can't believe the first time I saw him is when he's already walking. So it's clearly been a year. <laughs> uh, number yeah. two, great set of kicks on him. Great hat. I love yep. the, I love the way that you guys, um, style uh, game is strong. Um, yeah. The way that you, yeah, his, his, his attire was strong. Number three, kids at that age don't usually get sat in a stranger's, uh, lap to eat some d- mini donuts and just kind of chill and kind of go with the yeah. punches and him and I, you know, uh, immediate best friends, I would say yeah. some, some would Very call quickly. us, you know, thick as thieves. Uh, and, and he yeah. was a cool kid, man. He just, he's a chill, he's a chill boy. That's what I could tell from him. Pretty, yeah, pretty impressed by him. Yeah. On the way out, nope. he was also fist bumping everybody on the way out. So <laughs> I mean, man, <laughs> of the people. He man almost drowned in a puddle, but that's living. You know what I mean? Well, you did get to see the uh, both sides of the coin when it comes to a young man like Wanye Jr., where when he fell in the puddle, very upset. But when he decided to play in it on his own, <laughs> yeah. just having the best time. He fell face down in a stagnant water puddle at the ball diamond and inhaled most of it. And was yeah, quite your, your, up. Your, wife, your wife jumps into a pool at a pool party and she's all happy. You push her in and <laughs> she's mad. So I get it. <laughs> it's a great comparison. <laughs> it's almost the same thing, man. <laughs> All right. Pretty much. Uh, before we keep going or moving along here, got to give some love to our friends at Alfa Romeo of Edmonton, our luxury car partners, dealership on the West End. Check them out. Get some luxury in your life. Um, the other thing I wanted to hit on quickly here is the fact that we are working hard to make our mo- not mosaic team for the Oilers Nation Open, our mosaic teams up for the Oilers oh. Nation Open. So we had our first crew come around. And that one, we basically have six golfers confirmed right now. I have two golfer or two spots that I think might be taken for. They might not be. So uh, we got Ryan. We got Colin. Colin has a friend he's bringing with him. We got Scott. We got Bradley and we got Caden. So we have six golfers for sure. If you're listening to this and you're like, hey, I want to get in on the Oilers Nation Open. All you have to do is email me, Tyler at OilersNation.com, and I will slot you on one of these two teams. And if you're uh, the person in my Instagram DMs who said you might have a spot, you might not. Don't worry about it. If we fill up this next team, we'll just start a new one and we'll keep going this way. Um, So, yeah, if you are interested in going to the Oilers Nation Open, but you're like, I can't get a team of four. It'll be $250 for a solo spot. You can send me your info, Tyler at OilersNation.com. I'll put you on one of these two spots. If you're one of the people who I just rattled off, 
You'll get an email later today about specifics on how you can pay and confirm your spot in the Oilers Nation Open. So again, we're doing the mosaic team of real life listeners. We got six of the eight for sure filled. Two are our maybes, but we're just going to keep going with it. If you want to get in, send an email. August 19th out at Cattail Crossing. It will All be right. fun. Yes. Is so it, has anybody... Uh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I would no, no, no. You because yours is gonna be more important. Mine had more to do. No, with no. Well, because just... I just I just looked at our Instagram and it says we offered Evander Kane three by four seven five. Yeah. What? <laughs> who, who? That Oilers Nation said that. That is uh, Kevin. But, Kevin Weeks reported that today. But he wants like seven million. Yeah. Yes. There is so a bridge to gap there, if you will. There seems to be quite the difference between what Evander Kane wants and what Evander Kane might be worth. Yeah, so that... Oh, your M Chuck, did you go to the draft? That's a hell of an insight. <laughs> yeah, so that was from Kevin Weeks about an hour ago, Jay. Hmm. I, yeah, I just... Uh, Fra- Frank shared this take on the Daily Faceoff show. I think part of the reason you saw the news today that the Oilers have given his agent permission to go elsewhere is because Edmonton has offered yeah. some creative ways for them to work out a deal. Edmonton's been open in their negotiation. They're interested in Evander Kane, but Evander Kane's ask is too high. So the Oilers are kind of saying, hey, man, you want to get forty? You want to get forty-eight to fifty million on a long-term deal? Have at her. See if anyone will give that to you. If not, come back to us before Wednesday yeah. and let's see what we can do. I think that's a really smart like, play. I agree. It seems like the Oilers don't want to go more than three years. Is what it seems like, based on just cruising all the insider stuff, which yeah. would be fine by me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Big Dick Ken Holland seems to be doing a good job, guys. I don't know. He freed up a lot of money space. He's not stupidly giving Kane a vault. And like, if Kane's looking for 50 million bucks, that's a seven year deal that he's looking for seven by seven or six by eight. Yeah. That's a spicy meat to ball. Yeah. I'm not. Paying <laughs> that. That's too much. Too long. Mm-hmm. I Early wonder, Dubois, Connor Hellebuck. That's the answer. It could that's be. the answer. Second. Yeah. Uh, I believe Tyler just you know, muttered fuck under his breath. <laughs> yeah. Chuck, if he would just get on board, the trade would be ratified. <laughs> yep. Exactly, man. You could that, be the this difference is, maker. It's called building momentum. I think they should get Shesterkin. I agree. How, how do you propose that? Oh, wow. Okay, sure. I think they should uh, resurrect Johnny Bauer and uh, put him in that. Like, there's real, there's realistic takes, your M check, and then there's what you just said. <laughs> What's funny is you think yours is realistic, but he doesn't think yours is realistic. So there is a bridge there as well. Uh, I love it. I want hologram. Yeah, Coolio but I, I, I just next year. <clears throat> Ooh, that'd Who be that? Good. Hologram Cujo. Yep. Oh, that'd be great. He'd be unbelievable. He'd stop everything. That helmet. Oh, of course, it's a classic. Zone. Mm-hmm. Okay. I uh, I have to tap out now, teams. Good luck to you all. Yeah. Great chat. <laughs> Great chat. <laughs> Your M Chuck, so, please do the math and and, the, and, cra- and do the cap crunching math on how we can fit Hellebuck and Dubois. For I actually season. have Thank a name you. that's just the news just came out that this guy's going to hit the open market, and I am okay. quite the fan. What about Rem okay. Pitlick out in Montreal? Fifteen so, goals in sixty six years. Curious, why would Montreal? Oh. Why would they let him walk? So an it. interesting right. nugget of information I learned this weekend or this week is that there are there's the general belief out there that one point earns you $100,000 in arbitration. Yes. So for Rempit, like you had 37 points and the Habs don't want to run the risk. It doesn't always get you that, but there is always a chance the arbitrator says, yep, 3.7 million. So they just didn't want to run that risk. And I heard like, I heard someone tell me this weekend that there's actually GMs around the league who basically make bulk of their forward decisions around that number. Point is 100K. So like for Kyler Yamamoto, 4.1 million this year would be a fair deal in in their eyes. Ooh, that's expensive. Think of how many multi-point games Connor and Leon just rack the fuck up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So anyways, that's interesting. So that's probably why Rem Pitlick got walked away from at that price. That's probably why a guy like Dylan Strome got walked away from at that price is because, you know, they didn't want to qualify him at 3.6 million and they don't want to run the risk that he's going to get substantially more than that. I think, yeah. By that math though, Mm -hmm. Connor McDavid had what? 123 points this year? Yeah. So you're Mm -hmm. saying Connor McDavid is overpaid by $200,000. Yes. How dare you? Tyler Yurabchuk is saying Connor McDavid is overpaid. It's a sound argument On right this, there. On this, our 395th episode. <laughs> but but Connor's lucky he has Leon with him because Leon's underpaid. Oh, so it averages out. Yeah. Okay. Connor and Leon are both underpaid. That's the tragedy of this whole era. Yeah, yeah it really is. 
Well, we were What's talking about that with? yesterday at the River Hawks game. Again, shout out to the River Hawks. How Connor shout David out. makes 12.5 and in any other sports, they're just like, you make how much? And you're the best player in the league. It's like the Jays paying you say Kikuchi. Just signed a two year extension for sixty million dollars per season. Yeah, Dame Damian Lillard, Dame Dalla. How much is it? Two years, sixty million per. Holy! And and he's got a rap album. Oh, nice. How is it? He does. Sure. Yeah, I think sure. It's good. Dame raps. How is it? You could have Pharrell make your entire album for that kind of money. Yeah, no kidding. He got bars or what? Um, honestly, I've never really listened to him, but you can find him on Spotify, Dame and then Dalla, D O L L A, <laughs> with a period between every letter. Hell yeah. Um, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time given the money in the NBA and the cross cultural overlap, oh call God. it. So or I know an NBA player has a number one song. It will happen. Yeah. Okay. But like, how about this? Dame Dollar? I didn't actually know he was this successful. 345,000 monthly listeners. Probably, man. He's so famous. Look at J. Cole. He's very close. Like Master P of like being a rapper and going into basketball. At um, some point, either a basketball player or a baseball player will have like a really good album. Like Will Smith of Sports Plus. Yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Shaq Diesel peaked at 25 <laughs> in uh, 1990. I think he had, I'm not even kidding, two platinum rap albums. Uh, one's, uh, you're close, Wanya. Very, very close. The first one, Shaq Diesel is platinum. Shaq Fu, that one went gold. Ah. Uh, international platinum, probably. I had both of them. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, Dame Dalla used to roll the Fushnikas. Remember them? I do not. Oh, but do you I also true, own what? I am a true Fushnik. I'm a true. Exactly. Oh, so yeah. when Shaq made an album, he was smart in that he aligned himself with a good rap group. So most of his albums rapping with them. Other notable NBA rappers: Allen Iverson had an album. Kobe yeah. Bryant had an album. Kobe didn't he have like a whole album that he didn't put it out because it was too shitty? Actually, I'm looking at, I'm, I'm stuck on Shaq now while you guys are just kind of going back and forth here. I got, you know, I got skills off from 1993 that peaked at number three for Shaq. And you know, you know, that skills has a Z at the end, doesn't it? Of course it does. Of course. (laughs) It's the mid nineties. Everything got a Z. Of course it does. Yeah. Peaked at number three. That's impressive because he also had like several movies do very well. Uh, There's Kazam. Everybody loves Kazam when he was the genie and steel. He was a. Blue, Blue Chips, Chips was, was, that was legitimately good. That was unbelievable movie. Blue Chips was How awesome. How did he have the acting range to play an up-and-coming basketball player? <laughs> yeah. Remarkable. Yeah. Chalmers. Remarkable. Uh, you're, yeah. you're maybe the only one who's heard about this, but it's absolutely taken over the internet. Um, actually, before I do that, shout out to our friends at Oodle Noodle and DoorDash. Promo code Real Life Pod DD gets you twenty five percent off. No delivery fees on your first order. Ding dong! Shout out to DoorDash. Shout out to Oodle Noodle. Who, like we said, if you go to a Stingers game, the mops are sponsored by Oodle Noodle. Um, Chalmers, have you seen the Zach Wilson stuff? Oh my God! Yes, so, I have. Zach Wilson, okay. lead singer of the Beach Boys. <laughs> so, if you are listening to this podcast and you've not heard about this, let me get you caught up on what's going on here. Zach Include Wilson, me in that group of yep. people. Zach Wilson is the quarterback for the New York Jets. He's a young guy. Ugh. He uh, <laughs> he is a proud Mormon. Uh, he From went Utah, played it, played at BYU, played at BYU. So he had a longtime girlfriend, Wanya, and Uh-oh. they bro- they split up. This ain't setting up. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> let me let me let me let me so, let me just. I don't want to step on this, your M Chuck, but I would like to um, just <laughs> give a little more preference. So. The reason this whole thing started on Instagram was a post by a person yes. named Dax this Mill. This feels like the beginning of an I'm telling the story, Chalmers. Where it's like a little okay, boy is running by a dam. What could so, possibly happen? So Zach Wilson had a longtime girlfriend. Him and his girlfriend split up. His girlfriend then gets a new boyfriend and he goes by the name Dax Milne. Well, it turns out Dax Milne and Zach are former, because they've unfollowed each other and everything, former best friends, teammates, college roommates. This was his oh, wide no. receiver. At BYU. It was Zach Wilson at QB, oh, no. Dax Milne at wide receiver. They're both uh, named Zach? Sorry. No, Dax. Uh, Dax. D-A-X. So now Dax is dating Zach Wilson's ex-girlfriend. There is a picture on Instagram of it. And someone comments underneath of her photo, homie hopper. All right. <laughs> <laughs> she, re- <laughs> she responds to that comment and goes, well, he was sleeping with his mom's best friend. So who's the real homie hopper? 
his mom's best friend. Mom's best friend. And in a in a in oh. in, in classic internet, oh. she thought that this was going to help her, and it did oh, not. No. This actually made people like Zach Wilson even more. And now she's getting killed online for being a homie hopper. Dax Milne, he's deleted his post and probably wishes he had never put it out. And Zach Wilson looks like he's the coolest guy in New York. That <laughs> is one a person, power play. As one person said, he is throwing bombs and effing mm-hmm. moms. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason, story in Asia. and now, now it's put the microscope on Utah. Weird place. Yeah. There was another joke about how Zach Wilson, it, it's the first time a Jets player has scored from 40 or whatever, 40 or above <laughs> since 2018. <laughs> Someone photoshopped oh, him. I just sent it in our group chat. Someone photoshopped him as the times person of time person of the year. And uh, like when we'd say he's young, this guy's like 20 yeah. and like really good looking guy. Right. So uh, it's hilarious. Just the stuff that makes news in the in the dead of uh, summer, eh? the, the 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 dog days of summer. This is the stuff we've got to deal with. Yeah, that is funny. Speaking of the dog days of summer, anybody watch Big Brother? I'm not. I did not, not yet. It's recorded though. Yeah, okay, yeah. I got well, caught up I got, last night. I got I got caught up last night too. I got the first two episodes in me. Um, you know, Jr. made a comment, not hooking him yet. And I uh, beg to differ. I, I I have I have a couple couple opinions on that, but we'll save them for when you've seen it. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. I can see myself getting into it. I wasn't overly excited about watching the first two, two episodes, but then once you get into the rhythm and, you know, Julie's doing her thing and then you see everybody coming in and the first HOH happens and, you know, I'm starting to get, I'll get excited about it. Got right, got right to the competitions. They Unfortunately, they, everything seems to be happening so fast. They got right to the competitions, but there's also been a lot of, a lot of the, the sentimental stuff already happening. Um, oh. You know, well, really delving, too, like, which is... It doesn't give any spoilers to anybody, but like saying, oh, I love everybody in the house. You just got there. Day two, the guy says, I love each and every one of you. This is really hard. I'm like, is love mean? Does love mean the same thing it used to? I don't think so because you just met these people and you just talked about how you hate at least two of them in the diary room. Yep. I'm just hoping it's spicier than the last season because last season they had the one, the cookout, the... Alliance just kind of cleared everybody out and it didn't get interesting until the last four or five weeks of the show. Well, and, and so that's the thing is I'm looking at the cast and I'm seeing, I am seeing the potential for there to be some good storylines. Like, you know, the people are all as of right now, pretty likable, um, but they've all got, you can just see something in them. That's going to cause, there's going to be some blowups. I can, I, I can feel it. And I hope so, because that's the one thing this, this show has lacked for the last, everybody's, too nice. Nobody yeah. wants to get each other's face. Nobody wants to spaz. They know they'll live forever in a spaz. That's why. Yeah. 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 I'd like to see some spazzing too. Make it interesting. This brings me to my final point. All right. The celebrity sex lives. Okay. <laughs> Did you know Weird. that Chris Martin and Selena Gomez used to hook up? No. Isn't that odd? Chris Martin from Coldplay? Yes. Well, ladies love man to play the piano. You know? I couldn't believe it when I read it. Well, I'd buy that. I was wondering if anybody else knew, but apparently I'm on the fucking <laughs> lamest podcast about bloody NFL River Hawks. Dogs days of summer, bro. Chris Martin is charming, Man. though. I've seen I've uh, seen plenty of long interviews with him. He's a charming chap. I can imagine. Didn't he? Wasn't he with Dakota Johnson too? Oh, I don't know. I only you sit down at a piano and you play Yellow, and you wrote Yellow. You oh, can yeah. pretty much get whom's to you, please. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, I, I'm just looking at pictures of Chris Martin here. It's believable. Tyler, if you could play any instrument on earth to woo the ladies, which would you pick? Oh, it's it's pr- as cliche oh, as a, it is. It's guitar, there's, right? There's an absolute wow. one, two, and then the, and then the rest are far, far mm. behind it. But it's piano and guitar. <laughs> you just have to pick one of those two. Piano yeah. one, guitar two, keytar three, accordion four. Oh, keytar. Yeah, nice. you don't want ridiculous. If you want to get a get a gal, you play the xylophone. Uh huh. Nobody's sitting around a campfire with a drum set. Handbells. Get handbells. I would love to play the drums, though. They just seem fun. Yeah. Like an animal from the Muppets would just freak out and shit. Be a good time. Or how about a mouth harp, Tyler? (laughs) Harmonica? Yeah. You just bust that out in the club? Mm Mm-hmm. 
Make sure you have the right key, though. Mm. They come in different keys. <laughs> and then just start freestyle harmonica playing to random women walking by. <laughs> All right. You're not going home by yourself that night, I tell you. If you if 100 gals walk past you playing, <laughs> two will be in. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to wrap this thing up here. Shout out to uh, all of our lovely sponsors. Shout out to you, the listener. We will uh, Shout be out to back. Chris Martin. We'll be back on Thursday. Uh, just again, Nation Vacation Zach in Toronto. Wilson. That deadline could be coming up. Uh, Oilers Nation Open. Zach if you Wilson, want a solo Mom's spot, friend. email me. Um, I listed off the guys who are already in. And I think that is everything. We'll be back on Thursday. See ya. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Real Life Podcast. Don't want to miss any of our nonsense? Hit the subscribe button and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram.